His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 28 of this year, promoting and appointing a president at the National Intelligence Agency, the NIA. Article 1 stipulates that Brigadier General Bassam Mohammed Khamis Al Maharaj shall be promoted to Major General and appointed as president of the NIA from August 1st of 2024. The Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Msele met in Rabat with the Moroccan Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Bourita as part of his official visit to Morocco. The meeting discussed the fraternal relations as well as ways to develop cooperation through parliamentary diplomacy. The two sides hailed the development of Bahraini-Moroccan relations and the coordination and integration in international events with the directives of His Majesty the King and the Moroccan Monarch as well as the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister and the Moroccan Prime Minister. Mr. Moussalem stressed Bahrain's firm stance in supporting Morocco and the autonomy initiative in the Moroccan Sahara based on the unity of the Moroccan presidency and against all that targets its sovereignty and national unity. The national awareness campaign to protect children from e electronic exploitation and extortion was launched, organized by the public prosecution in cooperation with ministries and state institutions. The campaign aims to raise awareness on the risks of children's exposure to electronic exploitation, raise the control index of parents and guardians, execute, educate on ways to deal with such situations and the controls for allowing children to use the internet and electronic protection applications. In a speech, Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadal Bouainin said that the message of the public prosecution is related to the rights of citizens and residents ensured by Bahrain and has a parallel role in protecting society and preserving its human and material components. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour, delivered a speech expressing the Ministry's interest in organizing this campaign, which comes within the framework of community partnership to raise the awareness of children and their families. For his part, the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Jama, praised the cooperation between the Ministry and the organizers of this campaign to protect young people and achieve their best interests. He said that the campaign highlights the importance of the preventive role in anticipating cyber risks and stopping improper behaviors. The Chief of Public Security also delivered a speech indicating that the expansion of the Internet contains great risks and real threats that children in particular face and reducing them has become an urgent priority. An extensive six-month awareness campaign is being conducted by the Public of Prosecution in partnership with the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Social Development, Ministry of Justice and uh, Ministry of Information, and the Ministry of uh, Education. The primary objective of this campaign is to protect children from the inappropriate use of social media and uh, foster greater awarenesses among both children and their families. Uh, the campaign is set to run for six months and uh, it will be evaluated based on its impact to the society, family and the interaction of the government entities. Uh, Child Protection Cyberspace Unit of the Ministry of Interior works uh, hard to raise the awareness of uh, children uh, as well as adults in Bahrain since the unit was, was established uh, on 2022. For this campaign with, with our partner, uh, we have developed uh, an, uh, an integrated awareness plan uh, in the unit. It helps the children and and parents together uh, to understand the, the cyberspace risk uh, and how to deal with it and how to avoid become a victim or an offender as well. And now for more details about this national campaign, we're joined over the phone by public prosecutor Mr. Khaled Al-Jalahma. Hello Mr. Khaled. Can you tell us more about the goals of this national awareness campaign and until when does it run? Hello, and thank you for inviting me. I appreciate the opportunity to share my insights on the national campaign to protect mm -hmm. children from exploitation mm -hmm. and electronic extortion. 
Today we witnessed the launch ceremony of the national campaign to protect children from exploitation and electronic extortion. This campaign aims to achieve several important objectives, including raising awareness among children about the potential exploitation and extortion they may face while using the internet. It also aims to educate parents on how to handle situations involving the child and the offender. Upon discovering such incidents, and to encourage them to report these incidents to pursue the offenders and impose penalties on them, ensuring privacy for both the children and the informants. This national awareness campaign will involve several state ministries concerned with children and families. The campaign will continue for six months until the end of this year, during which the participating entities will conduct awareness sessions for children and families through lectures and through the distribution of informational brochures and other activities that contribute to raising awareness among children and their guardians. Through Bahrain Television, we invite all public and private entities and civil society to join this national awareness campaign for the sake of our children and families in Bahraini society. To conclude, children are our future, promising a better tomorrow. We must invest in their education and keep them safe from harm. By caring for them, we ensure a brighter and kinder world. Thank you for having me. It was, a great, it was great to discuss this with you. Public Prosecutor Khaled Jarahma, thank you very much for your time. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdullah Latif Zayani, attended the reception held by U.S. President Joe Biden in Washington, D.C. on the occasion of hosting the North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO Summit, coinciding with the 75th anniversary of the foundation of the alliance. The minister also attended the reception held on this occasion by U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken under the title Women, Peace and Security in presence of the foreign ministers of member states and other attendees. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met in Washington with the Chairman of the Subcommittee on Middle East, North Africa and Central Asia of the U.S. Senate Foreign Affairs Committee Representative Joe Wilson on the sidelines of the NATO summit. The meeting reviewed the long-standing relations of friendship between Bahrain and the U.S. and ways to promote cooperation to achieve both countries' interests within the framework of the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, the CSIPA. They also discussed the situation in the Middle East the most prominent outcomes of the recent Arab summit in Bahrain and the initiatives it adopted, including the convening of the International Peace Conference for the establishment of a Palestinian state, the provision of education and health services to those affected by conflicts in the region, as well as issues of common interest. Now, the Kingdom of Bahrain participates in the 75th NATO summit in Washington, D.C., with a high-level delegation to emphasize its continuous cooperation with international entities in defense and security fields. The summit discusses several issues, foremost of which the Russian-Ukrainian war, China's influence in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and the defense spending of NATO countries. The summit was attended by officials from allied and partner countries, along with a large number of journalists and observers from around the world. Its agenda includes the Alliance Forum at the level of presidents and heads of government, which discusses defense issues. A joint session, including the Alliance's partners across Pacific and Indian Oceans and in the EU, will also be held in addition to a special session on the war in Ukraine. Participants celebrated the 75th anniversary of NATO as an affirmation of the Alliance's strength and the commitment of its participants. As part of the official visit of the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Arumayhi, to China, a memorandum of understanding was signed to enhance bilateral cooperation in the field of exchanging technical expertise in the social housing sector. The MOU was signed on the Bahraini side by the Minister of Housing and on the Chinese side by the Minister of Housing, Urban and Rural Development, Ni Hong. The MOU comes within the framework of the Belt and Road Initiative and aims to exchange expertise and cooperation in many areas of housing. The minister emphasized that the MOU 
will contribute to enhancing bilateral cooperation, exchanging experiences and benefiting from China's leading expertise in the housing sector. For his part, the Chinese minister expressed pleasure with the MOU signing, praising the growing urban development in Bahrain, particularly in the social housing sector, stressing his keenness to enhance cooperation and exchange visits to develop joint relations to enrich housing policies and plans in both countries. The two sides held an expanded work meeting to discuss cooperation in the social housing sector and develop relations to enhance the outputs of housing plans, diversify housing options and accept accelerate the provision of adequate housing for citizens. Now, Temkin affirmed its ongoing efforts to ensure the optimal use of support programs in line with the Labour Fund's mandate. This includes intensifying inspection visits to entreprises and individuals benefiting from programs aimed at supporting employment and career development at a rate six times higher than before. The chief executive of Temkin, Maha Mufiz, affirmed that efforts to strengthen monitoring and inspection will continue, ensuring optimal optimal guidance of support to its rightful beneficiaries. She said that the success of these efforts undoubtedly relies on close collaboration with government partners based on shared responsibility and working within the Team Bahrain framework. The permanent representative of Bahrain to the United Nations office in Geneva, Ambassador Abdullah Abdullatif Abdullah, presented his credentials as a permanent delegate to Bahrain to the Director General of the UN office in Geneva, Tatiana Valovaya, at the Palais des Nations in Geneva. The ambassador affirmed Bahrain's keenness to strengthen cooperation with the UN and its specialized agencies to achieve joint UN goals. He reviewed the outcomes of the 33rd Arab Summit and the initiatives of the Bahrain Declaration. He also stressed the importance of building on the relations between Bahrain and the UN office in Geneva. The Director General of the UN office welcomed the ambassador and wished him success in his new duty, affirming the fruitful cooperation with Bahrain. The Kingdom the Kingdom of Bahrain is participating in the meetings of the permanent committees and the fifth plenary session of the fourth session of the third legislative term of the Arab Parliament in Cairo. The members of the delegation and representatives of the Bahraini Representatives Council in the Arab Parliament attended the Palestine Committee meeting where the delegation affirmed that it is time for the international community to stop the practices against the Palestinian people and push for the implementation of international legitimacy resolutions. The messages issued by the Arab Parliament on the developments in the Palestinian cause and Arab Parliament's draft resolution on the situation of Palestinian women in the Palestinian territories were also reviewed. And the president of Comoros, Ghazali Osman, received the speaker of the Arab parliament, Adela Soumi, as a guest of honor in the celebrations of Comoros Independence Day anniversary. President Osman praised the role played by His Majesty the King in defending just Arab causes, strengthening Arab solidarity and promoting the process of joint Arab action. He lauded His Majesty the King's wise management of the Arab summit hosted by Bahrain in May, which had a pivotal role in supporting Arab issues. Mr. Osman praised Bahrain's comprehensive development in all fields and for his part Mr. Asumi affirmed the Arab Parliament's support for Comoros in all fields. <laughs>